all righty what is going on ladies and gents welcome back to the channel for another weekly update hope everybody's having a lovely day and with that being said let's get into the weekend ta all right guys. so we're gonna start here with the weekly time frame then we're gonna go down to the daily time frame and before we start this video i'm going to preface this video with an opinion all right guys weekly chart equals bearish daily chart equals oversold suggesting a short-term bounce that probably will be a dead cat bounce going off of this weekly chart. So there we go. Let's get into it, all right? First things first that I will point out to, guys, you have had a uh, dynamic change here, all right? Like, the tides have started to change. You did break under your weekly 9 EMA. That is the short-term moving average that I like to watch for a trend. All right, see how you're riding it up. See how you're staying above it. Eh, you kind of got a touch point there. I know on QQQ you come over here. Picture's more clear over there. Guess what? Clear as day. You're underneath that. Clear as day. All right. So weekly charts have definitely turned bearish. You had this six week long range here. I was personally looking to move up out of that. I thought we were going to have a blow up top. We definitely did not have that. You did see a break down from that range and boom, bop, bing, boom, pow. You have now seen this weekly chart switch to bearish. That is how that goes. All right. You're bullish. If anybody was wondering what I kept saying for you know weeks maybe months on end throughout this time you're bullish until you're not this is the point when you're not all right you're bullish on this dip here you're not bullish on that on that bounce you're bearish on the bounce i'm personally looking to short that bounce get out of every long on that bounce and short the bounce and then we get another one of these all right i think that is going to be how that goes we did get a big fat red bar right over here and I do remember us pointing out, guys, this could be the beginning of the end. And you could very well be getting this opportunity. I do know for a fact that is how that was said. I wish I kept that in mind and was not just sitting there buying the dip up here. All right. Because, you know, in the reality, it was the beginning of the end. And it did end up selling off. But now, guys, we're looking for that. All right. That move right there. I do think that is about to play out. I will not play out. I do think it's about to start. It doesn't have to happen immediately. All right. So let's come back to the weekly time frame and let's point out, guys, you have a big fat red. This is a Marabuzu candlestick, but we're going to call it a big fat red wide body dildo looking candlestick. This thing is bearish. You got the increasing volume to go with it. Not the best look. That's what we'll call it. All right, guys. So. It doesn't have to be how this goes, but I am going to point out, you typically do not have a bottom, a short-term bottom on this weekly chart associated with this candlestick or anything like that. Now, again, this could be a different scenario because, you know, we have, you know, everything on the daily and the four-hour time frames suggesting, yeah, we're probably about to get that dead gap bounce. All right. But on the weekly time frame, I have to be uh, blatantly clear here, guys. Let's just look back. Do we see a bottom get put in off of candlesticks like this? All right. Not really. Nah, not really. You really do not. Come over here. You had one of these. Guess what? You gapped down the next week and then your bottom was in. Then you had a face ripper. All right. We have one right here. Gap down. Then you had your face ripper. Right here, yes, this did put in your bottom, all right? That was along your uptrend. You were in a bull market just like you are right now. I think it's very clear. If anybody is still trying to uh, convince you that this is a bear market, please just mentally slap him in the face and tell him that, uh, hey, go look back and show me on the charts a time where a bear market surpassed the all-time high and then proceeded lower. Go find it on the chart. Get back to me. Tell your friend to get back to you, and that should shut him up, because quite frankly, it is ridiculous if anybody is thinking this is a bear market at this point. It's very clear that's not the case. Now, yes, we have some wonky fundamentals going on behind the scenes. All right. Yeah, we're going to get a crash. But there is no reason to call this a bear market. Definitely is not. It definitely is not. All right, guys. So, yeah, you can... You can bottom off of candles like this that go down five freaking percent and have a very small lower wick at the bottom. You can, but this is the only one I can really point to. <laughs> All right, so that's it. 
all these other occurrences of this candlestick, I cannot say uh, these give uh, me confidence that we're going to be having that bottom, right? Like, this is what I'm talking about. This is actually exactly what I'm talking about right here. You're probably going to be going lower, and then you bottom. Right here. Going lower, and then you bottom. Going lower, then you bottom. Going lower, then you get a bounce. All right, I think you guys see the, the picture I'm getting at. And no, I do not think we're crashing. All right, and let's just get that out of the way right now. If anybody does think we're crashing, let me know down in the comments. I would love to see who thinks we're crashing. Um, guess what? Let's just come back over here to COVID. Guys, you do not have a chance that you were having the same scenario go down over here. This was your last crash. This was it. All right, this was it right here. You had a 3% gap down. You guys see that out and about? You guys see that? We could have had it. We could have had it on Friday. Well, we could have had a 2% gap down over here on uh, NQ. Could have. It recovered by market open. So there's that. But that is what I want to make very clear right now is that we do not have dynamically behind the scenes, we don't have that psychology that is causing this, this mass panic. All right, while markets are closed because there's a fundamental thing wrong with the economy, with the supply chain, with how things are going to be functioning moving forward, we don't have that right now. It's not at all the case. Not at all. In reality, you 100% are selling off because of war news. And that does suck. All right, that sucks that that is the case right now. All right, not the sell, but the actual war news itself. That sucks. All right. Well, let's be really freaking honest with ourselves. You're not getting a crash. You're not. It's not happening. Not even freaking close. All right. You've had this. I'm not going to call it a slow, slow sell because, you know, weekly candlestick here, 3% sell. That's a $12 move down. Well, $15 move down. I forgot. Now we're at 500 instead of 400. There you go. <laughs> and there you go. Uh, but yeah. It's not a crash by any means. There's not a chance. If it was a crash, you'd probably see this thing getting oversold like way quicker than freaking five trading sessions. All right. It would it would be going down, it would be going timber. All right. So that's my opinion there. I, I hope I just, you know, pointed to the evidence that suggests to you that this is definitely not a crash. We're not crashing. Every other time that you have had this news, you've been able to buy the war news and it, you have pretty sure done well. All right. If anybody wants to fact check me, please let me know down in the comments. All right. But um, yeah, I remember the Russia invasion. I'm pretty positive the markets went up after that. All right. Like there was a massive like panic and then boom. All right. And then we actually did have something that was kind of fundamentally wrong back in March 13th, 2023. Where was that? It was over here. No, that was right here. I remember buying the crap of this thing. And this was, again, where everybody thought that the market was crashing, all right? And, um, yeah, I remember doing well over there. And I'm just going to say right now, I do think this thing's going to bounce. I think it's going to be a dead cap bounce into a lower low, all right? So on the weekly time frame, since this is the weekly update, let's really talk about it. Yeah, on the daily time frame, we have things suggested we're going to bounce. We're going to talk about those in this video. But on the weekly time frame, guys, this thing is ugly. You are bullish until you're not. This is where you're not. You're not bullish on that bounce. All right, you get the bounce. You look to short that bounce. Maybe it doesn't work out. But you know, in reality, you very clear as they do have a breakdown here. QQQ makes it way clear. Six week long range here. Broke to the downside. There you go. That is uh, just a simple rule of thumb here for range breaks, guys. All right, you're just going to take the top of the range to the bottom of the range. 3.3%. All right, that is your minimum expected move here on that range break. So that was that. All right. But I think it's very clear that we're not going to, you know, just get bought up to a new all-time high. It could happen, but it's extremely unlikely from this point. I think we're probably getting this correction. Okay. Last time you had a one, you had a two, you had a three, you had a four, you had a five. What are we going to get this time? All right. These are the two scenarios we're paying attention to. Let's get this freaking arrow out of the way. All right. I do think you're probably going a little lower. I do. I don't want to say it, but, you know, unbiased me is going to say it. 
right there. Then I think you get a bounce into a lower high. And then I think you go lower. And then I get, think you also get a bounce into a lower high. And then I think you go lower. And I think you might find yourself right here at 460. All right, 460 to 480, that is the zone. That we are paying attention to on this bounce. Right here, you see 480, 460. Why? July high, previous all-time high. One or the other is going to bring a large amount of buyers into the waters. And we are very likely going to see them push it back up to all-time highs from there. Why? Because again, market's not crashing. We're not in a bear market. We're in a raging bull market. And this is definitely going to be the correction. Not the reversal. It's the correction. Okay? There's that. That's scenario number one. What's scenario number two? You got a A. Well, let's actually just look at it this way. A, B, C. Then you go back up. Both of these scenarios end in this. I was saying the same exact thing right over here. And here's going to be the tricky part. Once we got here, this is where you didn't know if this was going to be a dead cap bounce into a lower high into a lower low. Or if it was going to be a full-on reversal. You just didn't know. So I remember this being the tricky spot. Right here. Because you didn't know if this was going to be your A, B, C correction. Or if you were going to finish your five-wave sequence to the downside. You did end up having the four and the five. And then you ripped faces. Alright? So that's why we have these two scenarios right here. These paths, I'm highly confident one of these paths will be the way we go. Highly confident on that one. All right. Why? Because of what I just pointed out. You're either going to get this with the five waves down, or you are going to end up, and keep in mind, two of those waves are going to be just dead cat bounces. All right. I think we're about to get our first one. And I think we're, I know we're about to get our first one. I don't know what else to say about it. Like this, this bounce here is going to be the first one. All right. Um, can it just rip back up to the height? Yeah, I can. All right. And, um, you know, why do I also say I know? Because things look like this, and people are thinking there's going to be a crash with much further downside. People are calling for 480 from here. I think you're, uh, I think you have gotten lost in the sauce. All right. I ain't going to call anybody names, but if anybody is looking at what I'm looking at right here, being 495, all right, 495, and you think you're somehow getting all the way down to 480. As this looks like this, as this looks like this, as that looks like that, as that looks like that, as that looks like that, I, I don't know what to tell you. All right. I'm not going to say what I want to say right now, but straight up, that makes absolutely no sense. And I think you have to take a step back from this point. I think you're probably sitting and put profits. I think you should take them profits and just sit on your hands if you really want to short that bad. Because I can almost guarantee you that is not going to be the case. But price will be probably getting down there. And you're going to short this pop right here. This pop right here. This is where you're going to take your next short. So if you're that guy that is thinking how I just described. And you're like, yeah, no, the market's just going to keep dying. And I'm going to make so much money. All right. If you are already sitting in a bunch of green here. And that's the only reason the greedy mentality that you are, you know, thinking like that with. All right, please just acknowledge I just, just described your psychology and you're probably about to see that. And here is where you could take this money. And if you really don't want a long and you only want a short, this is where you get to multiply that money again. All right, you're going to get that opportunity. Now let's come back over here to QQQ. It is extremely obvious where there is going to be sellers on this chart. There's no doubt in my mind where there will be sellers in this chart. I can I can guarantee there will be sellers there. I don't know if they're going to hold the line. I think they're very likely going to hold the line there. But I can guarantee this is where sellers are going to be. Why? Because let's just look at market structure, all right? You have a low here of 433.71. You established the low of that range that day, all right? You then had a range for six whole weeks. That was seven whole weeks, guys. Seven weeks you stuck with that. 53 days. 36 trading sessions. Guys, that is almost two months. 
all right? Seven whole weeks, you stayed right here, and then you died. What do you think happens when buyers step up and they bring you back into this level? Probably get that. You probably get that. You probably will have an intraday balance here at some point, convincing people, oh, it's the higher low, and then you go lower. Why do I say that? Why am I not going to say that will be a higher low? Because, guys, weekly time frame. You just had your complete, the tides have changed. We have a shift here behind the scenes. All right? Sellers are taking the wheel. That is what's happening. All right? So buyers, they could be all happy on this, but just know this is going to be a short squeeze rally. It's not. It's very likely not going to be a real rally. You're going to see the bounce get sold, and then you do that. All right? So that is that. This is where we are looking for sellers on this bounce. Now, in the short term, all right, if you're just watching this intraday, you're looking for sellers to step in right here around 421. 421.63 specifically is that level that you just broke down from. I don't think it's going to go like that, but I do realistically see something like that. Where you pull back because you do have sellers sitting right there. Maybe we do get, you know, a five or 15 minute bearish divergence stepping right in here. And this, what was your demand zone is now your supply zone. All right. Guess what? Sell. Dead cat sell right there, right? Just like this dead cat bounce. We'll call it a dead cat sell. Dead cat sell into here. And then you rally into here. Here's when you get your actual sell. All right. So this, like realistically speaking, boom, let's say sellers step in there. Boom, you go up for a higher high. That higher high comes with a lower high over here on the 15 minute RSI. We'll talk about the short term time frames in a second here, because again, we have everything screaming that you're about to get a bounce. Guess what? That's what you're looking for. Bearish divergence, 15 minute time frame, just like you got the 15 minute bullish divergence sitting right here. All right. You're probably going to get the same thing stepping up over there. That's on QQQ. Two spots is 421.63 and 433.71. That is going to line with the golden pockets in right above. We very likely do get this. What I just described is so likely to happen. Why? Because we have a key level right here, but the golden pocket's right above, and it typically will get hit if you get that close to it. All right? And honestly, more often than not, it does get hit anyway. Probably will get sellers stepping in. Probably to do like a wick or something. All right? So you're probably going to get a shooting star candlestick sitting right here, or a spinning top, or something bearish coming out of right here that shows an upper wick. All right? And the upper wick is going to be in this golden pocket. Body. Wick, start your sell, all right? That's realistically what I'm looking at. And why are we talking this extensively about a move that's this this far into the future, probably one to two weeks away? Why? Why? Because this is a weekly update, and we're going to talk about the midterm, all right? Just so you guys know how I, how I think, all right? Short term equals this week. Well, short term, a few days. We're going to say three to four, two to four trading sessions. Midterm. We are always going to be thinking in two to four weeks, all right? Like two to four, yeah, I'm going to say the midterm there, all right? If we're talking longer term, guys, I know long term means like a while, all right? But we're really looking at like two to four months. That's how I think. That's exactly how I think, all right? So QQ, here and here, sellers. Spy, where are we looking for sellers? on Mr. Spy, all right? Clear as day, the levels we just broke down from. I don't think this 504.91 level, I mean, the low of this candlestick right here, I don't think this is where we get a uh, big sell from. I think we're probably going to start that from like right up here at 509 up to this golden pocket. All right. So realistically speaking, I think you're at least getting up to this level right here, 508 on this bounce. All right. From there, you could do that. And then you could do that. Or, all right talk about this you get something like this dead cat sell right there like we just talked about over on qqq come up to 508 boom you sell from there all right or go a little bit higher and you get something like this those are really like two scenarios you could be watching out for all right we're either going to be and just to make this very clear 
I know I, I talk fast and I, I do a lot of these paths at once. All right. Right there. Right there. All right. But I'm highly confident you're going to get at least this move right here up to 508. And that is that. IWM. Where are you going to be paying attention to for sellers to step in? Well, we're going to delete this because you've slightly undercut that now. All right. But I will point out. All right, guys. Four hour bullish divergence as you come right into support. That's something to, something to take note on. And let's actually go like that. We're going to delete that top level right there just to make it a little bit cleaner. Boom. That looks clean. Clean, baby. Clean. All right. Now it is clear as flipping floppity day where these sellers are going to be stepping in for us this week. If we bounce this week, which I'm going to say is extremely likely. Here. All right. It doesn't get any more clear and obvious than this, guys. We have two scenarios over here on IWM that we are watching for on this bounce. Again, dead cat bounce. You got either. You're going to come up here. And you're going to say, screw this level. Probably definitely going to find sellers at this level, though. I'm just letting you know. So, like, if you do get this scenario, it's going to go like this. Very likely it goes like that. All right, so now let's just... Uh... Oh, I deleted the wrong one. Jeez, this is what I was saying with all the lines, guys. Even I'm confusing myself. Jeez Louise, man. All right, right here. You probably get sellers stepping into that level no matter what. Get that dead cat sell. Then you move up to the golden pocket. You sell from there. And you go a little higher... You backtest that, all right? That would be by Wednesday you would get that move. That's a big old move. I don't think that's going to be the case, though. That is a massive move if that is going to be the case. But then again, we literally sold off here, all right? 22 days. Never mind. We're not getting this move in nine days. I, I find it extremely unlikely. <laughs> extremely unlikely that that is going to be the case, all right? So I'm going to say right here. All right, these are your two scenarios that you're watching for over here on IWM. 199.66 is the exact level that you did end up having your breakdown from, so expect sellers there. You found buyers there. You found sellers there on the retest on that day right there. DIA, this is actually the only weekly chart that I am going to say suggest that we go higher next week, all right? This could very likely, this, this is your, uh, not higher next week, my bad, my apologies, that we bottomed uh, this week. Like, you know, last week. Like, it's still this week because it's Saturday, but it's last week, you know? All right. Hammer candlestick, increasing volume. Opposite look as you have over here on IWM with you, these big, fat red. This is actually a... Uh, I know you have the three white soldiers. Three white soldiers pattern when it's green. This is the three black crows pattern, which is a bearish reversal pattern. Just putting it out there. You also do have that increasing volume to uh, show that, yeah, sellers are increasingly taking more interest here. Just something I put out there. All right, right here is your black crows, and you continue lower. All right, do we have another example of the black crows? And by the way, guys, for these, uh, those three white soldiers and the three, it's either three white knights or three white soldiers. I think it's three white knights or three white soldiers. Looking for this. It's going to be an inside bar. That goes into a continuation bar. And you, you have to get a gap down again. And then boom. All right. So that is the three white soldiers right there. It's your bullish reversal pattern. or continu it, It's continuation. I've seen it more in continuation. I've never seen it on a reversal. All right. Three black crows. All right. Key thing right here. You're going to have these overlapping. All right, that is really what that is meaning. All right, just a little, little golden tidbit or some, something like that, you know? All right, but DIA, guys, where is all my drawings? Come on, buddy. Come on. Don't, don't do me dirty like that now. There you go, you little slowpoke computer. Holy, holy. Don't tell me the computer's going now, too. My keyboard just went. And I got the keyboard. Around the time when I got my... Uh, actually, I got it a year before I built this PC. Never mind. PC shouldn't be going yet. Honestly, my PC ain't really slow. I do a lot of things on here. Um, sometimes it, it drives me nuts, though. Eh, never mind. It doesn't really drive me nuts. My 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 uh, keyboard, that was driving me nuts. But I ordered the exact same one, and I went to Walmart, and I spent, like, 25 bucks on this cheap Logitech one because mine is not going to be here until tonight. 
And this happened, I think, on Thursday. I don't know, but I couldn't get on my computer one day because I couldn't type in my code. So there was that. Break and retest clears day over here on DIA's weekly time frame. Thing doesn't look bad where we watch it for sellers step in, all right? You're going to have this 38604 level up there. You're also just watching the golden pocket. It's one of the other, guys. It's one or the other. All right, and honestly, this doesn't look bad at all to me. It doesn't. It does not look like the other indices. I don't know if that's going to be a sign or not, but I, I'm definitely going to say these things don't look good at all. This thing looks pretty immaculate. All right, you come over here to Mr. Vix. All right, guys, now this ties into what I'm thinking. The weekly RSI is already up here. I think you're about to see a VIX. I don't want to say a full-on VIX crush because I don't know, but I do think that is probably going to be the case. Let's look at it this way, all right? If this thing doesn't crush and spikes massively again, like, you, it's really not going to do that. Like, look at this. It didn't go much higher. All right, you, you didn't end up like you had your big VIX push here. All right, and then you really like, I think if it's going to be something like this where you go slightly higher, all right, like you, you pull back a little bit. Let's look at how big of a pullback that was right there 25% pullback in a week. And then boom, by the end of the week, it did end up going higher. All right, so like we could get something like that. And then we're really just looking for a major bottom to be put in where we get weeks of rally without any pullback so like i don't think that's going to be the case i think we're going to have you know like i pointed out over here are we going to have screw these paths these are for the short term all right for this week i pointed out how i think it's either going to be this or it's going to be this and this is not supported by what i see on the vix weekly chart all right, so I think VIX is going to crush. I'm still going to stand behind that. I don't think this is a good place to be shorting. I'm also going to tell you right now, all right, premiums are pumped. All right, so, you know, long or short right now, your premiums are slightly more pumped than they should be. Well, if VIX was lower, yeah, that's just how VIX works, all right? Uh, so there is that. But again, I mean, guys, unless you're crashing, which I already pointed out, guys, I pointed out in the beginning of the video, this ain't no COVID crash. This ain't no crash. It's not a crash. I will stand behind that. We are not crashing. We don't have a fundamental reason to crash. All right, guys. When the Fed decides to cut rates, we will then look for a crash. Not right away, but it should be coming. We're going to say like within like six to, I don't know. I got I got to read, look up the statistic. All right. But there is a, there's this a statistic out there that i once remember seeing um which guess what all right you have the fed cutting rates uh, the market crashes within we're just going to say six to 12 months i don't know if that's the exact statistic there but you know that's what i am looking for that's your crash indicator that like it's going to happen during this cycle it's going to happen they're going to cut rates eventually it's just not yet all right it's not yet so i don't think we're having a crash I think I make myself very clear on that one. All right. And because we're not having a crash, I think it's much more likely that VIX ends up doing something like this and then it could spike back up. So this is actually exactly what I was just talking about right here. All right. Or you got this case right over here. You kind of just stayed elevated for a while here. And this, if you want to go back over here to March 2023, I remember it. Guess what? You only had a one, a two. One, two, three, and A, B, C. So that's what I was saying. VIX staying up here does not, like, it doesn't really, uh, doesn't suggest, all right? It does not suggest you get a, uh, it suggests you get a full-on VIX crush, and then, and then we can see VIX rise to the occasion again. But, like, I really don't think it's just going to stay elevated up here. It doesn't do that. You're going to see these big swings on it. And we haven't seen the big swings on it. I think we're about to see it. So let's see it, okay? Now let's talk about some individual components because at the end of the day, guys, everything looks like it's about a bounce to me. Except Goob, guys, it just never died off, all right? But let's let's talk about it. Amazon, four-hour RSI, no extended hours on. Extended hours on, this thing is in the gutter. All right, you're in the gutter. And if you really want to play that game, right here was the low of right there. You went... 
a dollar lower, less than a percent lower, and then you ripped absolute faces back to the upside. Now, Amazon, although I don't think the indices go back to the upside, like all the way back up, I think Amazon is about to. All right, so this is something that I really like on this dip, just putting it on your radar. All right, but um, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, guys, we have this in Microsoft. Justin, they're about to get a big old bounce. That's about to be the case. If that's the case, the market probably gets a big old bounce. And let's actually just take a look at the daily RSI as well. Guys, it is diving. All right. This is the same exact, like exact spot you got your last big bounce. Okay. Same spot. Come over here to Microsoft. Your daily RSI is now at 33. Same spot. Okay. That you got your last two major bounces from. You should have had... Now, you didn't have a bullish divergence here, all right? Guys, this thing is very not... It's very likely not going to do this, where you break under your key level and hit it with the break and retest. It's very likely this thing's going to bounce off of here because this is the exact spot you want to be looking for buyers here on Mr. Microsoft. All right, like straight up, this is it. It's right here. Right here. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's right here. And again, you want to turn on extended hours. You got the same look as Amazon. Go find me at the last time this, this took place. All right? It was in your bear market. That's how aggressive this freaking sell is. And no, I don't think it's a bear market. I do not at all think we're in a bear market, which is why I don't think that's going to be the case. We're very clearly in a massive uptrend here. And you look for buying opportunities along that uptrend. You do not look for your selling opportunities. All right? On the weekly chart, it really doesn't look as ugly as it does over here on QQQ and SPY. But we're talking about the daily and four-hour time frames. And just like on SPY and QQQ, those also suggest you're not going much lower and you are very likely about to get a big old bounce. We have earnings next week. These are going to be big things. All right, we have big tech earnings. I think we have Amazon, we have Microsoft. We have three big boys next week. We have Meta. Uh, we have Meta reporting. We have Amazon reporting. We have, uh, do we not have Amazon reporting? No, no, we don't. All right, so it's Meta. Am I bugging? Am I bugging? Who are the big ones reporting this week? Oh, it's Goog. That oh, freaking Goog. All right, so we got Meta, we have Goog, we have Microsoft. Those are the three big ones reporting that I was seeing, all right? We have those things. Goog is something that I want to point out here. Goog did this. You went up here, tapped a new all-time high, pulled back. If you're bullish on the pullback, you got to buy it up to a new all-time high. Amazon, new all-time high, pullback. How much is it going to pull back? We don't know, but you're kind of pulling back to the perfect spot here. It's probably not going much lower, and you're probably going to get to ride it back up to the all-time high. Amazon specifically is what I really like on this dip because I think this is going to make a new all-time high, unlike these other names. Microsoft, we're looking for a dead cap bounce in this guy. We're just looking for you to come back up here to test the top of this trading range around 415. I think it's very likely going to be the case. All right, so there's that. Let's come over here to Mr. NVIDIA. What the heck is this, guys? What the heck is this? The tide has changed over here on Mr. NVIDIA. I still will say, I don't think you're coming down here. And if you are going to come down here, it's going to be done in this manner. You're not just going to aggressively sell off like that. I understand you got bought up. This is not something that uh, it's just going to sell off and die. It's not going to happen, guys. You did just have your biggest red day in like over a year, though. That was 10% red day. You had a very long time. I don't even know where it is, but it's somewhere along here. You've had a 10% red day. 9% right there. All right. So I will point that out. That is a thing. You're watching for buyers step in here in this golden pocket. But at this point, guys, all right, I think you're going to get a face ripper out of this golden pocket. You literally have had the daily RSI not do this since back over here in September 2023. Guys. We have a lot of trading sessions between here and here. Like a lot. It's more than half a year. And you are now getting your reset. And you want to get bearish on that reset? I don't think that's the way to go. It could be the way to go. And you do you. But 
I'm just going to let logic take over and speak. And I understand the market doesn't always like to be logical. But let's be real. This thing is giving you this pullback. And it's probably going to go exactly how it went over there. And guess what? You had a lot more aggressive sell here. Don't you think it's probably going to get a more aggressive buy? There you go. Regardless, if you're looking to short this beast, guess what? If you just missed this move right there, you're looking for the pullback. You're not looking to short the hole. Because you very likely are shorting the hole right here, right now. The RSI is at 34. You get another red day and you try and short on that thing. Boom. Alright? It, it could be gone on you. Like, this is not with extended hours on. With extended hours on, guys, this thing is at the lowest level it's been at in a very long time. You gotta come all the way back over here. Where'd you hit that? At the bottom. Where'd you hit this? At the bottom. We have another time. It's coming all the way back in 2022, guys. Now, this is a case where you had a dead cap bounce there of 3%. You did end up going another 7% lower. If you waited out for a month, you actually did end, like, you know, 26 days. So you bought calls 35, uh, 30 days out here. You actually did end up having a good time. All right. You had a 20% move from that buy-in, even though you went 7% lower. That That's a thing. All right. That, that is a thing. All these occurrences here, you did end up getting a big bounce. And keep in mind, this was in the freaking bear market. You're not in that bear market. We've talked about this during this video. You're not in that bear market. Boom. All right. So I, I will leave it at that. You can do whatever you want. You can think whatever you want. But I just showed you the facts of what has happened in the past when you have these readings. And um, yet they don't lead to much for the downside. They lead to uh, much more upside than they do downside. And there's that. All right, so you got the beast being oversold. You got Amazon and Microsoft looking like they're really not going to be falling much further from there. All right, and then you have this. Spy, daily RSI, 31. Q, daily RSI, 29.65. DIA, daily RSI is finally turning back up. It's at 38, but it hit a low of 31 over here. 30.95. IWM. Coming down here, you hit a low of 32.67. Yeah, 32.67 on the RSI. Rated a key spot. All right. You know, if you're looking for much more downside, I don't know what to tell you, all right? It's just like, I'm not someone who just is like bearish on everything and like looking for like sell opportunities all the time. But if I was, I'll tell you right now, you have no reason to be doing so right here. All right. If you do get a sell to start off the week, it is very likely going to be something like this, where you put in the bottom, and then you rise throughout the week. Or, do we have another? I think we had another right here. You put in the bottom. Now, this is aggressive. I remember this, actually. I played this, and I was mind blown. I remember this. I played it. Holy sweet baby Jesus. I do remember that day. I do, I do. It was insane. It was insane. And you guys want to know another insane day that I do remember and I actually was on the wrong side of? Right here. I remember thinking, holy shit, I'm rich. The market's crashing. And then it ripped my face off. All right? But yeah, I remember this also right here. And this is what I'm telling you guys. I've shorted bottoms. All right? And if you know, you're know you new to the market and you're kind of pissed that you just saw this and you didn't play it, it, it is never an idea, a good idea, to just clear as day try and play the late game move. There's no reason to do that. You're later into this game. The time to play during the game was up here. You're down here. You're probably gonna, you know, make a bad decision and then get your face ripped off. And then by the time it actually comes to the shorting opportunity, you're pissed at the market again. All right? So I'm just gonna tell you my plan. I'm gonna get out of every long on this move, and I'm gonna short the market here. Or on QQQ more specifically, guys, big short gets put on right here. That's that. All right. Okay. I think I've discussed everything I wanted to cover in this weekly update. It is a 39 minute video. I hope you guys have enjoyed our time together. I have enjoyed this time. I honestly, uh, I'll just tell you guys, I love making these videos. All right. They're, uh, they're a solid part of my day every day. All right. Well, six days a week. Did not make a Friday update just because I knew I was going to talk like this 
on the weekly update. And I was like, you know, I'm probably going to say the same thing. So I don't really want to do that. All right. Uh, oh, but we did not talk about the uh, lower time frame stuff going on here, guys. Everything is dying. All right. But you do have that bullish divergence going on over there on QQQ. On the hourly time frame, you do have that bullish divergence on SPYs right as you come into your uh, demand zone down here. Your support level at 493.56. This was the level, the exact level we pointed out in the last video that we had. All right, this is what we were paying attention to. If you weren't going to be holding this gap, fill at 497.56, 37. Darn it. I was wrong on that one. Um, but yeah, all right, so that's that. And if you come down to the 15-minute time frame, guys, you're just kind of carving out these guys. And uh, you got that over there on QQQ. Over here to IWM. All right, you got a whole big boy over there. TIA, TIA was not falling off cliffs, so you do not. You had it established over there all right but then you come over here to yes same things and q same things again dow was not selling off so there was that all right but guys we have the triple bullish divergence going on here on qqq and spy and then iwm also has a bullish divergence going on over here all right I just don't think there's the most reason to be super ultra bearish right now. I understand people think that, you know, the war is probably going to escalate and stuff like that. But uh, if I had to take a guess, it's not going to escalate. All right. If I had to take a guess, it's going to be a buying opportunity on this war news. And then you're going to get that. You're going to get this bounce. You're going to get to take profits on the bounce. Hopefully the profits. And then boom, you get to sell the rip. And there you go. And I will conclude that video. So with that being said, I will catch you all in the next one. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate the time. And everybody have a lovely rest of your weekend. I will catch you guys on Monday during the next trading session. Peace.